In this lecture, you will learn a method to solve quadratic inequalities. The skills you will need to successfully master this lesson are the following. You must recall the simple algebraic properties of inequalities. That means you must be able to move terms and factors around an inequality. You must know how to sketch the graph of a quadratic function. You must be able to determine the x-intercept of a parabola. And you must recall how to use interval notation. Let's begin the lesson by looking at what is a quadratic inequality. A quadratic inequality is an inequality of these types. Sometimes they don't present themselves like that with a zero on one side. If they don't, then use the simple algebraic property of inequalities to write them this way. What do I mean? Suppose you have this inequality. As you can see, I don't have a zero on one side. It's easy to get a zero. Just subtract 5x from both sides and you get the inequality 3x squared I meant 5x, minus 5x plus 1 is smaller than or equal to 0. So again, an inequality can always be written in the following form. The method we're going to use to solve quadratic inequality is part algebraic, part graphical. The most important aspect of it will be the graphical aspect of the method. Let's go over right now how to solve an inequality graphically. So suppose you're given the graph of a function y equals f of x, and you are also given the three intercept of the function, 1, 2, 3. And let's say you want to solve the inequality f of x is, let's say, greater than or equal to 0. How can you do it graphically? So what does it mean that f of x is greater than or equal to 0? Well, f of x represents a variable y y is equal to f of x and the point on the graph is a point of coordinate x y or x f of x so f of x above 0 means that y must be above or equal to 0 so it's easy to see now that this point right here has a y that is above or equal to 0 and so is this one right here it has a y that is above or equal to 0 on the other hand this point right here does not have a y that is above or equal to zero. It is below the x-axis. So right here, y is negative, while for these two points, y is positive, right? So I can see that for all these points right here, all these x, y points, all the y's is above zero. Here it is not the case. Y is not above zero. Here Y is not above zero. But again right here Y is above zero. So this is an equation where the variable is X. So I have to determine for which X Y is above zero. Well it is pretty clear that if you take any X's in this interval right here, the y will be above zero, right? If you take an x right here, y is above zero, y is above zero, y is above zero, right here, right? And also if you take any x's not here, that doesn't work here, but here, any x right here will send y above zero, okay? And again, it wouldn't work before. So because my inequality has an equality, I'm allowing the case where y is equal to zero. So I'm allowing the case where I can take these point as solution, these uh, x as solution. So basically, graphically, I see where my interval is going to be. It's going to be from here to here and from here to infinity. So how do we write that using interval notation? This f of x is above or equal to zero if and on the if x is in the interval x1 to x2, that's the first interval right here, x1 to x2, comma, or union, and then x3, and then forever to infinity. So this is how we solve an inequality graphically. Let's go over a more concrete example now. 
This is example one from your notes. I've only indicated on this example the x-intercept of the graph. I haven't written all the information you have in your note because to solve inequalities, I just need the x-intercept. So what inequalities do I want to solve? I want to figure out where f of x is smaller than or equal to zero. So again, that means where y is smaller than or equal to zero. So let's look at the graph. You can see that for any point here, my y will be smaller than or equal to zero. It is not true if I take this branch of the graph, all my y's right here will be above zero. So I don't want this, but I really want this right here to solve this inequality, right? Then there is another interval right here there is another branch on this branch right here all the y's are negative and also on this branch right here all the y's are negative negative simply mean f of x below the x-axis below the x-axis right that's all it means right f of x below the x-axis so now let's spot for which x this will be true so if i want my y's to be below the x-axis i know i can take any x's here and y will be below the x-axis, right? It works for any axis here. And so I have my first interval, which is down to negative infinity. Can I take a negative five? Well, let's see, I have an equality. So yes, negative five will be included. Now I cannot take any value right here. That doesn't work because for these x's, my y will be positive. Uh, so I cannot take any value here. But on the other hand, I have another interval right here for which any x right here will send y below the x-axis. y will be below the x-axis right here. So my second interval, and again, I can take my boundary right here. And then finally, I can see I have a third interval right here. Again, I'll take the boundary in. So how do we write the solution of this inequality? Well, we write it like this. So um, the first interval right here is negative infinity until negative five. The second interval right here is from negative 0.8 until three. So union negative 0.8 until 3. And finally, the third interval right here is from 6.7 up to infinity. That's a solution of the inequality right here. Let's move on to another example. Okay, let's see if we can go a little bit faster on this one. So here, I see that the branch of the graph that are above, above the x-axis, that's what it means, positive, above the x-axis, are this one, and this one right here. Now this time, I am not allowing y to be zero, right? So I cannot take the boundary in. So where's my interval? I'm gonna take all the x's that are right here, but I will not include the boundary this time because at the boundary, if I take x equals negative 2.4, then y will be zero and I don't want y to be zero. And the second interval will be right here, okay, between 0.4 and 3.8. So the solution of this inequality is negative infinity to negative 2.4 union 0 0.4 to 3.8. That's it. That's how we solve an inequality graphically. Let's now apply these results to solving quadratic inequalities. This is example four from your notes. So in this example, I have to solve this inequality. The first thing I wanna do is grab the parabola y equals x squared plus eight x plus five. Once I graph it, then I will be able to solve this inequality graphically. Now I know this parabola is concave up. So basically I have three cases. It's gonna be either this way, or maybe it will touch the x-axis once, or maybe it will not touch the x-axis at all. If I'm in the first case, what's going to be my solution? I want to be positive. So the branches will be positive right here and right here. And so my solution will be this interval or this interval right here. In the second case, I want to be strictly above zero. So you can see almost every single point right here is going to allow you to be strictly above zero. Yes, except, except right here at the vertex where it is equal to zero and we don't want that. So my solution will be from negative infinity until this point and then I'll start again at this point and I will go to infinity. Finally, in the third case, 
every single y is above the x-axis and so in this case it doesn't matter which axis you choose you're always going to have a y that is above the x-axis that is above zero and so your solution will be all real number so now that we know how it works let's figure out the x-intercept of this parabola so to find the x-intercept i set my y equal to zero x squared plus 8x plus 5 equal to 0. That's going to be easy to complete the square. x plus 4 squared minus 16 plus 5 equal to 0. And so I have x plus 4 squared minus 11 equal to 0. Uh, two more steps. x plus 4 squared equals 11 and then I'm gonna go over one single step right here I know to remove the square I'll have to take plus or minus square root and so I'll move the 4 on the other side and so I have x equals so I said plus or minus square root of 11 and then the 4 moves on this side so it's negative 4 so I do have two x intercept and so I'm in the first case and I can tell you right now what my solution will be my solution is gonna be from negative infinity to negative 4 minus root 11 that's a lower value for the two solution union negative 4 plus root 11 up to infinity again i have represented this solution right here that's this one right there and this one right here um, i do need the x-intercept to indicate my solution let's continue Okay, let's go over example five. So now again, I have another concave up parabola. So again, I will be dealing with something like this or something like this or something like this. But this time, I want my inequality to be smaller than or equal to zero. My, my y's have to be below the x-axis. So again, if I'm in the first case, I do have an equality here, right? If I'm in the first case, it's going to be this branch right here between the x-intercept. So between these two values, that's going to be my solution. If I'm in this case, there is no solution. Okay, nowhere is my y negative. If I'm in this case, uh, all my y's are positive. So these are not solution. The only solution is right here because I'm allowing my y to be zero. That is going to be my solution. So in this case, my solution would be just that x intercept right here which is the x coordinate of the vertex okay so let's see what case we're in again to do that i want to find the x intercept of this quadratic expression so i make it equal to zero right here it's easy to complete the square if you complete the square you find x plus 2 squared minus 4 plus 4 equal to zero that will of course cancel x plus 2 squared equal to 0 and so I can see that I'm in the third case right here right there is only one value that makes y equal to 0 and that is x equals negative 2 and because I allow my inequality to be negative this is the only solution so my the solution to this inequality is only for one value and it's negative 2. If you try any other x's, it's always going to be positive. At negative 2, it's equal to 0. That's your solution. Let's move on. Okay, this time I have a quadratic expression. The parabola, if I were to graph it, would be concave down, and I want it to be negative, right? So concave down, you have three cases. The first one, the second one, right here, touching just right here, and the third one so what your solution you want it to be negative so in this case i want the branches below the x-axis i could have this branch right here i'm not allowing equality right so my interval would be from negative infinity until this x-intercept and then from this x-intercept until positive infinity right here um, it's always below the x-axis except right here it's equal to zero I'm not allowing it so in this case I would have from negative infinity until that x-intercept and then I pick up exactly at that x-intercept and I go to infinity right because it's all good except at that point and right here everything is below the x-axis so my solution would be all real number so from negative infinity until positive infinity what case do we have in 
Or how many X intercept do we have? That's a question we have to answer. How many X intercept to this quadratic function? So let's solve the equation. Negative two X squared minus two X minus one is equal to zero. You all know how to solve that. The first thing I'm gonna do is divide by negative two both sides. And so I have X squared plus X plus one half equal to zero. Let's now complete the square x plus one half squared minus one fourth plus one half equal to zero. So we have x plus one half squared plus one fourth. Take your calculator if you want. Minus one fourth plus one half minus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5 is plus 0 0.25 equal to zero. And if you move the one fourth on the other side, you have x plus one half squared is equal to negative one fourth. Now, of course, this equation does not have a solution, which means this parabola y equals does not have any x intercept. I am in this case right here. And so if I'm in this case, the solution set is every single x will be solution from negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, you can try to plug any x value in this expression. It will always be negative. Let's move on to the next example. In the next example, I see that I don't have a zero on this side, no problem. I'm just gonna add four X on both sides and I'll continue after. So let's see, what do we have? We have negative X squared plus four X plus two is above or equal to zero. Okay, I know what to do. I want to figure out the X intercept of the equation, the quadratic function, negative X squared Y equals negative X squared plus four X plus two. So let's solve the equation. Negative X squared plus four X plus two is equal to zero. Let's divide both sides by negative one. So what do I have? I have X squared minus four X minus two equal to zero. Let's complete the square x minus two squared minus four minus two equal to zero x minus two squared minus six equal to zero so i'm gonna write directly the solution please take your time if you want but you move that on the other side there will be a solution there will be two and you'll land on when the two moves it becomes a plus so two plus or minus square root of six okay so what does that mean let's see we have a parabola that is concave down. So I'm in this case right here and I have two roots. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Let's look at the inequality. I want to figure out where it is above or equal to zero. So I have to be between the roots, between the two x intercept and I don't allow to be equal to zero. So my solution set is, well, what's the smallest one? The smallest one is two minus root six and then two plus root six. And again, I don't allow it to be zero. So parenthesis, not bracket. Okay, let's do a second type of examples and then the lesson will be done. In this type of example, we want to find the domain of this function. Now we see a square root and we know the condition for the domain. The condition for the domain is that two X squared plus eight X minus two is positive or equal to zero. And you can see that this is an application of quadratic inequality. Please be careful, do not write that the condition for the domain is a square root of two X squared plus eight X minus two uh, above or equal to zero. This is not true, that's not the condition. The condition is only about the radicand, what's under the root, okay? Okay, so let's solve this inequality and we'll be done with uh, finding the domain. So let's see, uh, I know what I need to find. I need to figure out the X intercept of this parabola. So I make it equal to zero, two X squared plus eight X minus two equal to zero. Let's divide by two both sides, X squared plus four X minus one equal to zero. Let's complete the square x plus two squared minus four minus one equal to zero. This is minus five. So if you allow me, I'm gonna write the answer directly. So we have x equals, so when the two goes on the other side becomes minus two, plus or minus, when the minus five goes on the other side becomes five, that's why I have two solution, it's positive. So it's negative two plus or minus square root of five. What does it mean? Well. 
let's think about it. This is a parabola that is concave up, right? It's concave up, and there are two x-intercepts. So concave up, two x-intercepts. Where is it positive or equal to zero? Outside the root, right here and right here. So my solution is from here to here, and then from here to here. So let's just express that with these two value. So I have the domain of f is going to be, the first one is from negative infinity until the first x-intercept, so that's negative 2 minus, so negative 2 minus root 5, bracket, union, and the second interval right here will be from the second x-intercept, which is negative 2 plus root 5, and up to infinity, like so. All right, let's do one more domain, and then you'll do the last one on your own. All right, another function that I call f, so I know the condition for the domain. I have a square root right here, and so I want 7 plus 4x minus x squared to be positive or equal to 0. I know how to solve that. I need to figure out the x-intercept of this quadratic expression, and so I need to solve the equation. Negative x squared plus 4x plus 7 is equal to 0. To solve that, I need to divide both sides by negative 1, and so I have x squared minus 4x minus 7 equal to 0. So we have x minus 2 squared minus 4 minus 7 equal to 0. So that means x minus 2 squared minus 11 equal to 0. All right, how do I solve that? That's easy. I have x equals, when the 2 goes on the other side, becomes a plus. And then I will have two roots because when that goes on the other side, it becomes plus 11. So plus or minus square root of 11. OK, here again, two solution. I have a parabola that is concave down, concave down. And I know my two solution, right? Here is uh, 2 minus root 11. Here is 2 plus root 11. And I want that to be positive or equal to 0. So I want to be between the two x-intercept. So my domain, the domain of the function f, is 2 minus root 11, 2 plus root 11. That's it. That's how you find the domain of this function. Thank you for watching.